Hey, in today's video, we're looking at the Carl Zeiss 100mm f2 Milvus lens. Now, this lens is equally great and for most people, completely useless. So, it's a very specific lens. It's for a very small niche of photography, I guess. If you are a wedding photographer, if you're an event photographer, some forms of portrait photography, this is probably not for you. But stick around and I'm going to go through what the lens does, what it's good for and how I use it in my work. So the first thing to note with this lens is that it is obscenely expensive compared to the other offerings from Canon, Sigma, I've not looked at Nikon ones, but it's expensive. It's manual focus only, but it does have a chip in it. So it has the autofocus confirmation beep. So when you're doing your shot, you get it nearly in focus and the little autofocus thing will blip and say, yes, we've got it right. Now, when we're focusing with a lot of lenses, you go from here to here, but with this lens, the focus throw is absolutely monstrous. If you were at the Olympics using this lens, trying to track the 100 millimeter sprint, you'd be giving it all of this. So if you're shooting anything that moves, this is not ideal. If you're shooting still life work from a tripod or from a studio stand, or you're doing a portrait sitting where the person's sitting down, this is the lens for you. Now, the predecessor to this lens had a different lens coating and was also classed as a macro lens, whereas this is not. And the reason for that is it's not true one-to-one -one macro. However, for me, that's not an issue. I just pop extension tubes in. But if you're looking for that one lens does all, the Canon L version will be better and it has autofocus and image stabilization. So you might be asking yourself, why spend so much more money on a lens that isn't true macro, has a huge focus throw, and also doesn't have autofocus, IS, or any of the fancy modern bits. Well, it's not to do with sharpness, although this lens is obscenely sharp. It's to do with the rendering of the image and how beautiful the images that this lens produces. It's an F2 lens as well, and although I'm not a bokeh fan, I do like the rendering of this lens at F2 for food photos. I'm gonna show you some work at the end. I'm gonna show you some pineapple test shots first, but they don't really give you a true indication of what you can create with this lens. I'm not a great fan of shooting test shots and that sort of thing and you know charts and all the rest of it doesn't really help you choose which lens to get. Now build quality alone this outweighs anything that Canon has ever produced. The lens hood is metal, the construction is metal, it has a gasket for weather sealing, it come, it's like the iPhone experience of unboxing something when you receive it. It is absolutely beautiful. It is built to last. This will last me my entire career. And then looking at it as a cost per use sort of thing, it's not that expensive. Now, I'm a professional food photographer. I specialize in commercial food photos. And for me, it is the best lens for the job. There is nothing else out there which will do a better job for me that isn't for phase one. Phase one has the 120 millimeter Schneider lens, which is absolutely brilliant, but obscenely expensive. But this is the 35 millimeter equivalent and I shoot it mostly with a 5DS. Let's jump into the computer and have a look at these test shots. Now already my computer is starting to make a bit of fuss about this. I've popped these down as JPEG, so I've rendered them out. And this is where we are. So this is it F2. Now, you're gonna have to excuse the background changing brightness. It's not the lens, it's because a cloud moved and I shot it all with available light. At f2, wide open, this lens is pretty darn sharp. Now, you mustn't mistake the areas being out of focus with lack of sharpness. When we're looking at the actual bits that are in focus, for wide open, I can't think of another lens that's this good. Now, we do get the colour fringe in that almost every lens gets wide open. It's not particularly great with this lens. It's quite... It's really in your face, isn't it? These beautiful tones here and then the greens and the colour fringing is just like, hello. But we can live with that with a quick click of a button. Let me show you actually. If we just go into, where do we go? Lens corrections. There. Oh. Make this approve. I'm not sure how I've done that. There we go. Manual. Pick up our little pipette. Come over here. Come over here. And we can just drop these little suckers out. Go. It doesn't take much to get rid of it. Now, something which you perhaps won't notice in this test shot because there's no comparison shot, put my pipette down, is that the Zeiss lens handles highlights particularly well. Now, for years I thought it was the camera and the camera sensor that made the difference. 
But if I, I've taken two shots in the past where I've used a cheap 100mm prime from Canon and then the expensive Zeiss lens, and these highlights, they don't blow as quickly. They, it just really keeps them in there. I think that's to do with the coating on the lens. Now, I'm not a techie guy, but from what I've read elsewhere, that's what actually creates this. You also get beautiful colour rendition and contrast. Wide open, F2. This is detailed enough to print at any size. Now, if we stop down, this is it 2.8, uh, 2.2, I beg your pardon. And you can see the vignetting. And again, this, the uh, cloud annoyingly moved. Suddenly starts to be corrected. And let's just zoom in here. 2.2, 2.8. Wait for that big file to load. Content. There we go. Look at this. At 2.8, which is where the Canon versions start, this is obscenely sharp. The color rendition is great. I can't really fault it, to be honest. And this is under really bad lighting conditions. I've not done this under great lighting because I don't feel that that's a good test of things. 5.6, it's brutally sharp. Let's skip along a few. F10. Now, this is where the lens starts to degrade a little bit. As do all lenses, really. Once you go past F10, just zoom out again. The background out of focus is still pleasing. It's still nice. The highlights are well controlled. And the detail's still good, but you can see it's starting to get that over-sharpened look, or at least that's how I describe it. It looks like you've gone a bit overboard on the sharpening slider, which I haven't. F14, a little bit less, and then F18, the image is too dark because the, the well, the cloud must have gone over at some point during a 25 second exposure. Just wait for this to load, you'll see that it's a real fuzzy, soft image. And this isn't motion blur, I took a few shots and I've picked out the best one from each. This is just that the lens, it, it's gone past its best. Now this lens stops down to something like F32. It's not something I'd use, but if we go back to 5.6, or even eight I think is where it's particularly good. You can really see where this lens shines. Now for me, it's not about sharpness. I'm not interested in the DxO scores or any of this nonsense because my clients do not care. My retoucher slightly cares, cares, Claire's cares, because more resolution, more sharpness, more micro contrast does help. But for me, it's about the aesthetic, the rendering of the image and the color consistency. And this lens trumps everything else in my bag. So much so that I'm gonna be changing my 50 millimeter to a Zeiss similar to this one as well. Now let's jump into my website and let's have a look at how I've used it so far. Now I've not had this lens for long, so there's not loads of work in there, but hopefully if we just jump over to here, we can have a quick look. So I'm gonna do a quick comparison here for you. This lens, this lens, this image here, this was shot on a, a phase one IQ back, 80 megapixels with the Schneider 120 millimeter macro lens. This is the medium format equivalent. Now these are web res images. Now you're thinking we well, you can't compare web res, uh, web res images. Well. You can because that's what most of us see. There is no point in zooming into 100% of an image unless you're printing a six sheet or some huge exhibition piece. And let's be honest, most of us aren't. And this is shot with the 100 millimeter on the 5DS. This is the Zeiss lens. And I think it's great because it's also important of how that detail and how that contrast and how those colors, you can crush them down to a thousand pixels, 72 DPI image. Because for a lot of us, that's how the work's going to be seen. It's handled the highlights well on the skin here, where we've got the sort of, the current trend is to have quite a glossy skin look and it really, you know, pops out a little bit. This is about F10, F8, I think perhaps. It's all in focus, it's all sharp, and you can still see the detail even though we've come down. Now, I don't think I've shot another portrait with this lens yet. However, let's head over to food, because food, I have done some stuff. So this is always complicated for me because depending on how big the screen I open this on, things end up in different places. Right, this is the 100 millimeter at F2. Again, it's web res, but look at how sharp the glass is with the milk coming into the coffee and the rendering of that image, the way it blurs the background. And I'm not talking about bokeh, I'm talking about the way that the, the fall off of focus occurs because sometimes it's a real mess and it's like, here you go, you're in focus, you're in focus and bang, it's this horrible, ugly blur. But with this lens, it's absolutely beautiful. Same again here with 100 millimeters. Beautifully sharp and detailed. It's a great image in terms of image quality. It's not actually my favorite composition. This is using one of the backgrounds that I've created that will be sold soon, which is a shameless plug of mine there. Let's see if we've got anything else from this lens. 
that might be it for the moment. My portfolio is a little bit out of date. Now, if we want to compare this to the phase one version, as was this. And yes, the phase one has a slight edge on colors, on detail and resolution. And the lens is a bigger lens. It's, you don't get the vignetting, but it's not a million miles off. But, and this is an important thing to think of here. This was shot on the really cheap Canon one. Now I can see some issues where the highlights are not well controlled and this isn't an exposure thing, it's a lens issue. I only know that because I've tested it lots. The color rendition is not quite as good, but it's not a million miles off. We're not talking night and day here. You know, these images are shot on that cheaper lens, which is a fraction of the price. And they, I think it does a great job for what it is. And then this is how a lot of the images end up getting used. So we've got this guy here cut out and stuck on a, uh, what do you call this? A packet. Um, I didn't do the cutting myself. I just shot the image, lit the image. But this is shot on a equally expensive 135 millimeter F2 tilt shift lens from Canon, which I think has a similar image quality to the Zeiss. Perhaps it would have been a better purchase. If you're looking at a still life lens, you've got a lot of money to throw at it. Or what I feel is a lot of money maybe the 135 millimeter tilt shift is a really good option for you i don't know you need to do that research yourself but it's a great lens so where does that leave us so it's an expensive lens it's a niche lens you can take beautiful portraits with it i wish i had more to show you but my archives are so vast and unorganized at the moment it's not that easy just to delve in and try and find images shot with the lens however I do believe that if you are a still life, a food, or you're doing portraits in a way where it's not so much running around and jumping around, this manual focus lens will produce images that nobody else can produce. Not everyone has it, it's not as common, so you have that slight edge, especially when looking at the coffee shot. You couldn't recreate that image with a 2.8 Canon L lens. It just wouldn't work, it wouldn't look the same. You'd lose the aesthetic, which is what makes it so appealing. It's not about the sharpness or the detail, it's the aesthetic that's produced by the lens. So for me personally, this lens is a no brainer, but for a lot of you, it might be a case of, well, I need versatility. Sometimes I'm shooting portraits, sometimes I'm shooting a wedding. I need autofocus. Sometimes I want macro and then not have macro. I want to be able to do tracking focus, whatever it may be. But if you don't need those things, I cannot recommend this lens enough. If you're enjoying these videos, do hit subscribe. I'm going for two to three videos a week at the moment, hoping I can keep this going for the rest of the year. Thank you for stopping by and I'll see you all next time.